In the first episode in this VHS series, we cleaned up the remote control to this 1990s Sony SLV761HF. We started there so we could get an easy win on this project, and so we could get an idea of what we're up against cleaning this VCR and getting it back to usable condition. You're seeing the main components we'll be servicing here, the FE or full erase head on the left, then the video head spinning on that big drum in the center. We'll have a look at the auto head cleaning technology and also clean up the ACE or audio control erase head. If you've got a different machine, things may look a little different inside, but you should be able to follow along pretty closely. You can also look online for the service manual for machines like this. I used manualscenter.com to get the full PDF with schematics and parts diagrams and parts lists, and that was only $5 for the digital download. Before getting into servicing though, we need to clean this machine. First, we'll do the outside and use a plastic razor to scrape the old stickers away. Use some Goo Gone as well to get rid of the residue in a few places. We talked about it in the last video as well, how cleaning first gives you a great opportunity to inspect the whole machine as you go. The more detailed you can be in getting into all the cracks and gaps in the case, the more you'll know about the machine and what it needs and any potential issues. This can save you a huge amount of time if you find out early that you need to order parts before you have the entire machine broken down on your desk. We'll do a quick clean around the back too. We'll use some electronics contact cleaner and an old RTA plug to burnish or clear off any oxidation that has settled on the contacts. And after that, we're pretty much ready to open the case and clean inside. Now, even though this era of electronics are very easily opened for repair and servicing, you've got to remember that there is mains voltage exposed inside and you need to proceed with caution. Capacitors in these units can hold a big charge well after being unplugged. And if you're not confident identifying these types of dangers, please don't go poking around or trying to service equipment until you've gained that confidence. Mr. Carlson's lab here on YouTube is a great place to start and especially his Patreon. It's like an ongoing electronics course and you can learn a lot about this type of stuff. As he often says, if you're following along with this procedure, you are doing so at your own risk. Please be careful. Taking off the lid, this one doesn't look too bad really. There's nothing crazy going on inside, no bugs or pet hair or anything terrible, which you do see sometimes, especially on eBay purchases, but there is a solid layer of dust and dirt on everything, including the moving parts and the heads. This is honestly a lot better than I expected, but it's still worth cleaning out. These dust clumps will just continue to get bigger and they hold moisture and that'll eventually cause all sorts of problems down the road. And this is already a pretty old machine. To do some of this in period correct style, I picked up this 1988 Metro DataVac vacuum that was billed as the first cleaning system designed specifically for computers and office equipment. They actually still sell this exact model, but it's been updated a little bit and now it's all black. And I just couldn't pass up the retro styling of the original and it's a fraction of the price. There's still a bunch of these on eBay actually. Now, honestly, I thought that vacuum was gonna have a little bit more grunt. 1980s vacuums aren't really known for being very subtle, but maybe I'll do some more testing and do a separate video on the data vac in the future if anybody's interested. With the big chunks and dust balls gone, now we can get our trusty foam anti-static sticks and the isopropyl alcohol back out and we can start getting into the details. I made a disclaimer in the remote control cleaning video, and it applies here as well, that using isopropyl on any plastics or any silk screening or printing can damage it and it can dry out the plastics. Also, any of the rubber belts and rollers, especially in a VCR or any sort of tape deck, do not use isopropyl alcohol on those. You will dry them out. And what you do want to be looking for on those is that they're not gummed up or sticky. 
Uh, if they are, they may need to be replaced. Sometimes that rubber does just spoil, especially after 30 years. And that is something that can absolutely ruin tapes when you try to insert them. It'll grab the tape, that residue will get stuck to everything, and it'll run through the entire machine. So take a look at your rollers and any other rubber parts and belts and make sure that they're intact and that they're not spoiled or splitting or cracked, but don't clean them with any alcohol. Again, we're going to clean everything and inspect as we go for damaged parts or things that just don't look right. This isn't very exciting to watch, but even for a machine that looks pretty clean going in, you can start to get an idea here of just how much dirt and dust is actually built up. It can be really deceiving, especially on these older brown colored PCBs, as they tend to hide the dirt really well. When you feel like you've got things as clean as you're going to get them, we can move on to cleaning the heads. Starting with the FE head or the full erase head, we're going to use a lint-free anti-static foam swab and some alcohol, and we just want to wipe it gently to remove any debris. Don't apply too much pressure or you'll knock it out of alignment and then we'll have to do another procedure to realign it, so try to avoid being too rough. When we're happy with this one, we can jump over to the ACE assembly which contains the audio head, a head for control data for syncing audio and video, as well as an erase head. The same procedure applies here, being careful not to knock it out of position or press too hard. Next, we're ready to turn our attention to the video heads, finally, and this machine has four. You can see them rotating around this upper drum assembly, and they're very easy to get to for this procedure. This model is a really good one to demonstrate this with because it has a head cleaner built in from the factory. You can see it's just a simple foam roller that gets pressed against the heads during each use. Now there are a good few instructions online for cleaning these heads, but unfortunately some of the ones on YouTube especially show folks using Q-tips or cotton balls and that's an absolutely terrible idea. Don't do that. The best way to go about this is, again, with some high percent isopropyl alcohol, and either a simple piece of printer paper, or like I'm using here, a lint-free, static-free foam swab that is intended for cleaning electronics. The last thing you wanna do here is get a chunk of cotton lint stuck to a head or to damage the heads by poking a Q-tip into them. We want our swab to be lightly damp with alcohol and we wanna place it flush with the drum and just rotate the head past it gently. You don't need to scrub here, and it's better to have to go back a second time if you think it's not clean enough than to risk doing any damage by being too heavy handed. Now with this machine, unfortunately, there won't be a big before and after payoff with a whole lot of difference that you can notice in this machine. It was pretty clean coming in and it played pretty much just fine to start with, but that's the whole point of doing regular maintenance, of course. You need to do this with your machines regularly and especially if you're using them quite often or even not if they're sitting there for most of the year it's a good idea to come up with a regular time of year maybe january slow for you where you just know that you're going to clean all the heads in your tape players and hopefully that way you'll be able to avoid having any issues when you actually need to use the tape players that's what we're trying to avoid here is when you actually need to do some work with one of these machines you want it to be ready and maintained you don't want to have to risk media that might not be replaceable finding out that there's something wrong in your machine so that's the procedure for cleaning a sony videotape recorder one of the last tasks you're instructed to do in the service manual is to clean and check the line cord for any breaks or damage before returning the equipment to the customer. That's a smart idea for our regular maintenance too. Older cords can turn brittle pretty quickly and they might need to be retired eventually. If you've got any questions about this video, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe so you don't miss the next videos in the series. We're going to be taking the composite analog video from this machine and using hardware to upscale and digitize it and then capture it. That'll be coming up and there might even be a vacuum video soon too. Thanks for watching and special thanks to channel members and Patreon members especially for supporting these videos. Links below to get your name in the credits as well as accessing early videos and members only content. And you can access those for just a dollar a month. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.